Now, what was it about this script that intrigued you as an actress? Woo-wee! Well, this is a loaded script. Uh, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of content that we cover. So just as far as being a young actress in the industry, you know, there really aren't that many scripts that are as challenging as Snow Babies is and was to accomplish. So that already grabbed my attention right away. It was very raw, real, and gritty, which just inspires me as an actress um, as far as being drawn to the project. But obviously more than that, there's such a deep meaning to the film and you know the film has the possibility and ability to save life. So that was also another driving force of me wanting to attach to it. Um, but it was just so well written. I mean it's a turning it's a page turner. You sit down to read it and you're reading it tell you're done. And and I read it multiple times after the first time I read it. Um, just so as far as me wanting to attach with it, those were the main main things for me. How about you, Paula? I honestly completely agree. Katie said it perfectly. It's very intense. It's very heavy. There's a lot of work that's required as an actor to accurately portray these characters, which for us is such a gift because then we're really able to stretch ourselves and then we can make a difference hopefully by doing so. So not only are we getting to do what we love, but we also have the opportunity to make a positive difference. And I don't know what else we could really ask for. Right. Exactly. Well, drug abuse is such an important issue and it's one that has sort of plagued the world for generations now. Uh, what do you think that people can learn from watching Snow Babies? So many things, so, too, 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 too many things. But I think the main thing that I think will be a big eye opener is that I think when people think about someone who has an addiction to anything, any sort of substance, it immediately draws a mental image right then and there. I think anyone would, you know, tend to think that someone with an addiction, you know, is like low class America or whatever, but in reality, it, that cannot be further from the truth. There's such a stigma on it. And in reality, you know, this movie shows that it, it could be, you know, a 16 year old honor student who lives, you know, in nice suburbia. It, it doesn't discriminate. And at the end of the day, Addiction is a disease, and I really hope that it opens, you know, the people's eyes to see that your your child, your aunt, your uncle, your brother, whoever, they can have an addiction. It is it is definitely definitely not out of the realm of possibilities for someone that you know to have an addiction. Yeah, I think Snow Babies will really help to destigmatize addiction as well. Before someone is an addict, they are a human. They are a person. Mm -hmm. We see that these girls have great personalities. I mean, they have great chemistry. They're likable. They're just your regular students. And that's so important to see because it really can be anyone, like Katie said. So I think it's important to show that and to also show the fact that it not only affects the person that's struggling with addiction, but it also affects their family, their friends, their community. And we show how easy it is to hide and miss the signs. Mm -hmm. Now you two are playing uh, lifelong best friends who've uh, been together and for each other throughout everything, even before the bad time. Um, at one point, as just as actors, because obviously you only have so much time to get to know each other, did you feel comfortable enough to feel like that could be shown in your uh, relationship? Well, luckily in our case, Paula and I have been best friends since we were, I was eight and she was 10. So oh, this was, go kind of an off chance amazing thing that happened to us. We got to live this experience not only as on-screen best friends, but real life best friends. And mm -hmm. that's not something, you know, the average actress gets to experience. And it was All such right. a special, special time for us. Absolutely. I think too, what's so great is that the chemistry just shines through the screen. Mm -hmm. And that's so special because you could put two phenomenal actresses in these roles, but when you actually see that true genuine connection as Kristen and Hannah, it makes the story drive home even more because you're rooting for both of them and they're both making mistakes. They're trying to find something to grasp onto in this world. So then when they start clashing, you're rooting for both of them. You want them to get the help that they need. You want them to pull each other out of this, but they're just pushing each other away. Right. Now, have you ever had to deal with anyone in your own life who was having addiction problems and how did that inform your the way you played the role? Uh, in my personal life I have known um, some friends who have battled with um, some sort of addiction in some sort of way whether it be this or that. Um, so I did have firsthand experience with you know someone who had to go through these things that my character also had to go through which obviously really helped me draw when I played Kristen. Um, I had to go to 
crazy dark places that I never could have imagined at such a young age I would be able to go to. And I really think that the only reason I was able to do that is because of the extensive research that went on, is because of talking to addicts who were in recovery. And, and more than all, it was just the trust that was on set between me and, and everyone else who was there. I just felt 110% like I could trust every single person. And so that's how every single day I was able to give the performance that I did is because there was no sort of hesitation or hold back for me at all. It was such a safe space for sure. Exactly. It was such a gift to have a scene partner like Katie and then have a director like Bridget Smith, mm -hmm. that they are willing to go there with you 110%. Because like Katie mentioned, when you're going to these really dark places, you have to feel safe. You have to feel safe as yourself to access these emotions that obviously you don't on a daily basis if this isn't something that you're experiencing. So mm -hmm. that's why it was so important for us to do the research, to read the articles, stay up to date with the news, watch documentaries, films, etc. It was a huge part in, in the learning experience going into it. Absolutely. Now, Katie mentioned in her research that she did speak with some addicts, uh, or former addicts. Did you guys also talk with drug counselors, doctors, anyone else to sort of get to know more about the addiction experience? We did have a technical consultant on set one of the days that we were filming, which was extremely helpful because from a technical standpoint, I don't want to give too much away as far as the film goes, but there are things that you need to accurately portray. It's very specific to the things that, that mm -hmm. these girls are experiencing, as well as, of course, the actual act of shooting up the drugs. That's all very technical. And when Kristen and Hannah are seen doing this, they ne it needs to look very routine. It has to look like they're normal. This is their everyday life. So we got that down to a T where it's, it's very disturbing when you see it because it almost looks the way that two girls would be taking out their makeup to like try on a fun new look. It's, it's what they're doing with a very, very horrible substance. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, what parts of your character did you feel were the most like you? I mean, obviously, you're going through some very extreme stuff, but there obviously has to be some something of you in there, too. I think it's pretty funny to mention um, that in reality, in the reality of it all, I, I am more of a Hannah type of character, and, okay. and Paula is more of a Kristen type of character, so yeah. it was really fun. For, uh, for me to be able to play the more, you know, sweet, soft-spoken, honor student kind of thing, because I'm much more of like a very outgoing social butterfly, big personality. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really fun for me to play Kristen because she is so sweet and soft-spoken. And um, But I think that the thing I related to most with Kristen is just that, you know, she had a very strong relationship with all everyone in her life. And, you know, I try to go out of my way to make sure that everyone in my life have a very great relationship with them and everyone's very understanding of each other. And I always felt like Kristen was very, 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 you know, sure to make sure that she knew everyone was doing what they were supposed to do. You know, she was just very, like, um, very in touch with everyone in her life. And I feel like I relate to that for sure. Okay, how about you, Paula? I think for me, Hannah is a little bit naive, which as I get older, you gain more worldliness. You're a little bit less naive, but bless her heart, she she makes some, some rough mistakes along the way because she just really, truly doesn't know any better at the time. And then I think too, she's very loyal. She's fiercely loyal. Kristen is the most important person in her life and she tries so, so hard with her. And it's so heartbreaking because like I said earlier, you're rooting for both of these characters and there's so much miscommunication between them. And then when it comes to her older boyfriend, Jeff, she's also so loyal and she's trying so hard, but it backfires on her in some ways whenever maybe he doesn't have the best intentions for her. And then Kristen and her just aren't seen eye to eye. All right. Now, obviously your characters both go to some very dark places and without giving away any spoilers or anything, but just as an actress, what were some of the really hard parts for you to get get a hold of as an actress? Um, I think that um, I think that you know the toughest thing that I had to battle just as far as the the filming process goes is we were filming up in uh, Philly, like the outskirts of Philly, and there's a lot of scenes that we have to do or or that we did that were taking place outside, and we were filming in you know November, so just as far as 
the actual conditions of filming. Sometimes it was a little bit um, rough to be able to give a performance and also be, you know, wearing like a sundress in 20 degree weather, um, which was, you know, exciting. It was exciting to be able to, you know, figure out what it would be like in those elements. Um, but that was probably just the toughest thing as far as, you know, filming goes. But yeah, I think just the dealing with the elements was somewhat difficult for me at times, but worth it. Yeah, I think for me emotionally, and I, I know that this probably Katie might be, I th I'm sure Katie can relate to this as well. Oh, yeah. There are a great amount of scenes towards the end of the film that just emotionally they are very taxing where you finish the scene and you have to pull yourself out of it as an actress. And sometimes it takes you a little bit longer than you anticipate when you do put so much of yourself into it, which is a beautiful thing, but then you have to, like a light switch, turn it off and pull yourself out of it because it is, it is really heartbreaking and it is hard to see. And then when you're dealing with real families on set that have lost loved ones to addiction, it makes it all the more real when you're able to look them in the eyes and just give them a genuine hug. You, you feel, it's something that you feel, it's hard to describe, but in that moment you are so connected with someone that's living through this and you're just showcasing their experiences as best you can. Right. And well, piggybacking what Paula said is like, you know, like she said, at the end of the day, when you're done and they call cut, you have to almost remind yourself that you're not the character. Like you're not actually going through that, you know, because it is so real, especially with Bridget Smith being the director, she just made everything feel so authentic. And like, you know, we really were in it. We really were experiencing those emotions, but just having, you know, your real life best friend on set and my mom always goes to set with me. Those things really help you get out of it. And plus, you know, eating comfort food always really helped. But right. uh, it's just at the end of the day, you do have to remind yourself like, these are not my problems. You know, this is just acting. <laughs> right. Well, one of the saddest parts of the movie is that Kristen and Hannah really have so much potential to, uh, they're really, going off to good schools and everything. So many good things could happen in their lives and you don't know if that's gonna get messed up. Um, now, obviously, like Katie had said earlier that not just everyone, it's just not poor people or people who are uneducated that get it. But how important do you think it is to tell a story about this? Like sort of middle-class smart girls who get involved with drugs. I think that it is, it is incredibly important. I think that this is a conversation that many people are perhaps sweeping under the rug or maybe they feel it's a bit taboo to talk about it when in reality, you know, the people that are struggling with the addictions it is our youth, it is killing our youth at a rapid rate. And I think that when people see this on the screen and they see the reality of it and all of the, the harsh realities that come with addiction, I mean, I think that it, it will be eye-opening and hopefully it allows parents to see that their kid is not immune and life is very fragile and you can lose your life like that in an instant. And now that they're lacing fentanyl with these drugs, I mean, it, it, you, you could do it one time and you're dead or furthermore, you do it one time and you're addicted just like that. And I really hope that with this movie, you know, parents can have conversations with their kids that they probably wouldn't have had before because they were afraid to bring it up or didn't want to face, you know, the bull by the horns. But in reality, it's, if you don't have the conversation, it could kill your kid, to be honest. Right. Absolutely. I completely agree. It's so true. Yeah. Now, both of your characters are introduced to the drugs through uh, guys in their lives. And uh, how do you think that kids uh, in school now, which of course kids aren't in school now, but uh, in general, um, can fight that kind of peer pressure and stuff like that, particularly from guys who they might think are cute and want to get be involved with? Yeah, it is really important to see that this, it almost starts as something fun mm -hmm. and it's social for them. Kristen and Hannah are seen at a party, they're having a great time, and then they end up doing something so, so awful. So it's not something that should be taken lightly by any means. Like kids needs, kids and teens alike need to have that, that confidence within themselves to say no. And I don't want to sound like a cliche PSA, mm -hmm. but it's the truth. I mean, with Kristen, it starts with Oxycontin. It's one pill. What I think that the problem with teenagers is sometimes they think that their actions don't necessarily have consequences or, oh, that'll never happen to me, but it can happen. And it only takes one thing for you to get hooked and then be like, this is the best thing I've ever felt in my life. No, it's not. 
no, it's not. You can't keep spiraling downwards because it's very easy to, and then it, it's tunnel vision. That's all you see. It's very dangerous. So destructive. Yeah. I think that, I think that, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I was in high school, you know, a few years ago, so it's not, it wasn't, it's not been that long since I've been in high school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think being a very young and naive girl in high school, it's really easy to get wrapped up in boys and even, you know, not to give anything away, but, you know, in the opening scene, Kristen uh, does get wrapped up because of a boy. And, you know, that one bad decision that she made because of a boy literally derailed her life very, very hard. And, right. you know, if she wouldn't have made that one one decision to impress that one boy, she wouldn't have been there. And I think it's just important to empower young girls and know that you are more than a boy. You do never ever need to do anything to impress a boy. And honestly, in high school, boys are nothing but trouble. So stay far, far, far away. (laughs) Well, I mean, the uh, one of the other major parts of the movie is sort of like Kristen uh, is attacked by a boy when she's under drugs and she becomes pregnant. that's sort of con- contrasted with the other couple who is trying desperately to have a baby and can't have one. Uh, why, do you, why do you think it's important to show that difference that a, woman, a girl who doesn't want to have a baby is having one, another one who wants it is not able to? It's just such an interesting juxtaposition as far as just the film itself goes. It's just written so well with the storylines, you know, playing off each other. But also, ironically enough, you know, Kristen is this young, beautiful girl who has so much going for her, could never even expect or want to become pregnant. And then vice versa, you have, you know, the exact opposite storyline of a beautiful couple who are married and they're ready to take on the world together. And they're just desperately, desperately trying. And obviously, you know, it, it comes to a to a close at some point, but, um, you know, it all ends up working itself out, so that's all good, but I think it is just such an interesting, Mike Walsh is just such a fantastic writer, the way he intertwines stories and makes them all fit together, and you're always wondering this, that, what's happening, what's happening here, so I just think, honestly, at the end of the day, it was a very interesting juxtaposition that helped the film. Mm. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a squeamish person, but some of the ways that you guys shot up in different points where like really sort of freaking me, me out. I, I'd never heard of a lot of these things. Uh, were there things that you learned about the that lifestyle that sort of like scared you and freaked you out? Said, how can people do that? Completely new. It can be as easy as Kristen's voice of method where she shoots up in between her toes. And then it was wonderful because we had such an incredible makeup department. Our head of makeup free was phenomenal with the special effects that was all her and and it's great because it makes it to where the audience is just uncomfortable it's like you want to look away but you can't yeah and I also think that like it also gives you you know retrospect of how desperate these addicts are I mean they're they're filling up a syringe and they're injecting it into their veins and if it doesn't hit the vein and it goes somewhere else it's a waste so they have to redo it and over and over again and you know mess with the vein and eventually the vein doesn't work anywhere they have to pick a different vein so it really just lets you know how desperate they are you know to get the drugs to get well and I think that it's just important that we realize that you know it is a disease at the end of the day no, nobody wants to have a heroin addiction and you know they can right. get help well, speaking of desperation, those scenes underneath the L were uh, some of the more disturbing in the movie. Uh, how freaky was that to go through those filming of those scenes? Well, we actually were able to drive through Kensington before we started filming. So mm-hmm. Katie and I drove through with, with our writer, Mike Walsh, and we got to take a very good look at something very real and also where we would be filming, which was so great because we got to fully immerse ourselves as actresses. It wasn't like we were on a set or just some different street that was made to look like Kensington. No, like we were really there. Mm. And when we went with Mike, we went on a Wednesday night and you, Katie mentioned this before, you would think that it was a Saturday night, how busy it is. You, we, we saw real life drug deals happening right before our eyes. And it was crazy because on the way there, we, didn't know when we'd get there and we were just goofing off in the back seat and then it was just like boom instant and once we're like when how, when are we there are we there yet once we were there it was a complete change in tone complete change, like a 180. All right. now i'm also from the philadelphia area um and i have to admit i didn't recognize too many of the places that were in the film and 
Fortunately, I'm ashamed to admit that the L was probably the only one that I did recognize, <laughs> although not from that time period or anything like that. But uh, where exactly was it filmed? And how do you think that the area sort of helped uh, with the feeling of the movie? So we filmed like outskirts of Philadelphia. We filmed in like Yardley, Pennsylvania. Okay. Newtown? Newtown, Pennsylvania. Okay, that's actually yeah. not far from me. I'm in Jenkintown. Oh, cool. Yeah, I don't know if you know, like, the bird shop, coffee shop or something like that. We went there, like, every day, but um, I like Paula said, you know, I think that just really being there in the thick of that really helped immerse us into the characters and make it feel really authentic. I think that that was a huge, huge benefit as an actress to be in a real house, with a real room, with Kristen's name on the wall, you know, it, it, as opposed to them building a set, you know, that's honestly a benefit I feel of being a part of an indie movie is that, you know, you're always going to be, you know, dealing with people who are a part of a passion project and everyone that was involved was so passionate about the film. And I, I really think that filming on location is a huge benefit as an actress. Okay. A few questions that are a little bit off topic here. Uh, well, first of all, how are you dealing with the whole new normal, uh, live at stay at home lifestyle uh, and everything. What do you think, Dee? Well, I've always been a bit of a homebody, so it's not too, too bad. And then granted, we're both in the North Texas area, which is pretty far in the reopening process, I'd say. I mean, most okay. everything is open. You just have to wear your mask and be really cautious. But I've been spending a lot of time with my family, a few select friends, which is always really great having that extra quality time watching movies, getting active. I was never really a person that went on walks, but now I go on walks, which is really nice just to get out in nature, get some fresh air. I think all of us could use a little bit more of that nowadays. And just drinking my nightly tea, just just little things. It's, it's, it makes you appreciate the little things more and more. It does. Doesn't it? It really does. Yeah, I feel the same. Just honestly spending quality time with family. I was we were both actually living in LA the past year and after the pandemic, we both decided to move home, be with our families. And I think it was uh, hopefully for both of us a very nice grounding time, you know, get back in touch with your roots, realize where you come from, what's important to you, X, Y, Z. So I've been loving, I've been loving quarantine. I've not been loving the pandemic, but I have been loving quarantine, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it gave me a lot of time to work yeah. on myself yep. and just practice self-care and do some healing. It was really, really nice. It, it, it was crazy how the timing of it happened. I came back. Perfectly. Yes, I came back to Texas in March and quarantined here, and it was really, really perfect timing in a strange way. Yeah, I agree. Now, we have a big presidential election coming up. I don't know your age, but is this the first time that you get a chance to uh, vote for president, and uh, are you getting all involved, at all involved or anything? Yeah, absolutely. This is the first presidential election I will be able to vote in, and I am so excited that I get to use my voice for the better good of this election. I think that it's very important that um, my generation and the people my age get out there and vote, um, and that they really educate themselves on, on what's going on in the election and the two candidates, and I hope that they have their interest and the country's interest at heart when they get out there and vote. Okay. I completely agree, but this will be the second election that I can vote in. Although, okay. I, I know it sounds so weird. I feel like the first time that I voted, it was right after I'd registered and I don't even think, I don't even know if it counted. Something strange happened with the registration. Mm. And so I don't know if it counted, but this time you better believe I'm going to make it count. Yeah, <laughs> we're good on that, we're voting. <laughs> okay. Well, well, like uh, Katie said, there aren't many positives to the whole pandemic, but one nice kind of good thing, I guess, is that smaller movies like yours, they get out to people. They're, they have different ways to get out to people and they're not being sort of nudged out by all the big blockbusters, things like drive-ins, uh, streaming and everything like that. Do you think that this time period might be a good time for a little more movie like yours to uh, catch an audience? Oh, we're elated. We're absolutely elated. Um, it, it really couldn't be better for us. I feel like uh, at this point, I mean, like you said, that uh, it releasing on a platform such as Amazon Prime or iTunes really does give the opportunity for so much more exposure. You know, with Snow Babies going in the film uh, in the theater, it is a small indie film, and so there's probably people who wouldn't have even watched the trailer, wouldn't have wanted to buy tickets, whatever it may be. But now that we have it on, you know, these amazing platforms, it's 
so much more exposure is available and hopefully, you know, so many more people can see it just because I really hope that it starts conversations and saves lives. Yeah, we're doing our best to spread the word and tell everyone about the film. We worked really hard on it. I think after nearly two years since production wraps, we're pretty ready for, for the world to see it and see what comes of it. And I think it was actually originally supposed to be released earlier this summer, which then having it pushed back because of COVID-19 and everything that's going on, now it's being released during National Recovery Month. So it couldn't actually be perfect, like it couldn't be more perfect timing. And I think that it's important to remember that everything happens for a reason. And now it's, it's more relevant than ever. I know that also this time has been a huge struggle for people that deal with addiction because they are stuck in their homes. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy for them, but now this, this film can come out and hopefully, hopefully help them. All right. Well, thank you both so much for speaking with me and best of luck with the film. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Lovely talking Bye. to you. Bye.